Hello everyone, welcome to Odd On Demand, where I post videos every week about pop culture, politics, and everything in between. So obviously there have been some bad cases of whitewashing in Hollywood. Who can forget our half Asian quarter Hawaiian queen, Emma Stone in Aloha, or Matt Damon being the hero protagonist savior of the Great Wall of China in 11th century China, when China was almost exclusively made up of Chinese people. And last but certainly not least, um, Major Motoko Kusanagi, um, the protagonist of a popular anime and manga series played by Scarlett Johansson. And I don't know whether the Nina Simone biopic fiasco was the worst case of whitewashing. So, I mean, that was kind of clickbait, but it is definitely one of the most complex and interesting cases that I've seen in the past couple of years. The directors absolutely broke their backs to misrepresent Nina Simone. And in the face of backlash from the public, from Nina Simone's family, they proceeded anyway. This one's really juicy. So go ahead and sit back, relax, subscribe, and let's get into it. So in March, 2016, um, the trailer for Nina, a biopic about Nina Simone starring Zoe Saldana was released. Now, even though the trailer dropped in March, 2016, um, people had been outraged at the decision to cast Zoe Saldana, a light-skinned actress, as Nina Simone, a dark-skinned musician, for like four years at that point, like since 2012. Why, you may ask? Well, <laughs> they really put a prosthetic nose and blackface on Zoe Saldana. <laughs> There are so many layers and reasons to why this is just like incredibly offensive to Nina Simone's legacy and everything she worked for while she was alive. And I'll try and break it down. It's impossible to truthfully and honestly reflect on Nina Simone's life without thinking about the role that her identity as a dark skinned woman played throughout her career and her life. As Nina Simone's daughter, Simone Kelly wrote, we can go all the way back to when Nina was a child and people told her her nose was too big, her skin was too dark, her lips were too wide. It's very important the world acknowledges my mother was a classical musician whose dreams were not realized because of racism. Nina grew up and operated during a time when her skin color denied her access to a conservatory and denied her the opportunity to be the first internationally acclaimed black female concert pianist. But it goes beyond simply skin color and goes deeper into what specific shade of black she was because her career would have looked very different if she looked like Lena Horne or Dorothy Dandridge. Because back then, and honestly still now, it pays to be light-skinned and have Eurocentric features, especially in Hollywood. But Nina fought back against these systems, both through her actions and through her lyrics and songs and music, um, by just being unapologetic about her traditionally Afrocentric features, like her big nose, her big lips, her dark skin. She even wrote about the effects that colorism and misogyny had on her career and on her daily life in a diary entry. And she says, I can't be white and I'm the kind of colored girl who looks like everything white people despise or have been taught to despise. If I were a boy, it wouldn't matter so much, but I'm a girl and in front of the public all the time, wide open for them to jeer and disapprove of or approve of. So given the context of Nina Simone and her career and her struggle against these same systems of colorism, racism, and misogyny that we even see today in the entertainment industry, it was so toned up for the producers to literally go out of their way and spend more money on a prosthetic nose and darker foundation for Zoe Saldana instead of just casting one of the many darker skinned female actresses who already struggle to find work in this industry, who already struggle against the same systems that Nina Simone struggled against and are more qualified if not just as qualified as Zoe Saldana to play this part. Now obviously there have been a lot of actors and actresses who have played characters that look nothing like them so on the surface Zoe's lack of a resemblance to Nina Simone isn't really the issue here. It's more about the producers just continuing to propagate the same cycle of colorism that oppressed the person that they they're literally making a movie about. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Now there are a couple counter arguments I want to address because I mean there was a lot of backlash back then but also there were a lot of people who were like what is the big issue and like why would y'all be annoyed that Zoe Saldana got cast? First off a lot of people like Freddie Flange here were confused about why people would be complaining that Zoe Saldana isn't black enough to play Nina Simone and Zoe actually thought so too at the time she said in an interview with Allure in 2016 she said quote there is no one way to be black. Now see, you say that, and we all know that, obviously, but like, if there is more than one way to be black, 
why does it feel like the light skin way is the is the right way in Hollywood? <laughs> because if someone who wasn't American, let's say, like was just handed a wide array of TV shows, movies, like big hits, they could reasonably come to the conclusion that the majority of black people in America are light skin because they're the only ones that get the biggest roles, the role as the love interest. Like that's what we all see in American media and it's not representative of the black community that lives here. It seems like every time there's a black female role available, the producers reach to their little black girl toolkit and pull out Zendaya, Amenla Stenberg, Yara Shahidi. So basically, if I were to respond to Freddie, I would just say, I mean, no one, or at least I'm not, I'm not saying that Zoe Saldana isn't black enough to portray Nina Simone. However, to put it in a context outside race, Personally, I think that this casting decision was the same as someone casting a six foot tall man to play Tyrion Lannister in the Game of Thrones series. Tyrion's dwarfism was a huge part of his life, his character, and the way he navigated the world in the Game of Thrones books. So when it came time to cast a real actor for the TV series, it was important to capture that aspect of Tyrion's character because it was so integral to him and the way he navigated the world. And let's not even get into the fact that the movie was portraying a slice of Nina's life when she was in her 60s. And Zoe was already 33 years too young to portray Nina Simone at that time and they made no effort to age her. So like on every front, it just did not make any kind of sense. Another counter argument made by Sour Milk C and Zoe Saldana herself was that, well, I mean, yeah, the casting was a little wonky, but like the movie was better made than just being a script on someone's desktop, right? Zoe said, quote, the script would still be lying around going from office to office, agency to agency, and nobody would have done it. So I made a choice. Do I continue passing on the script and hope the quote right black person will do it or do i say my casting is nothing in comparison to the fact that this story must be told I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to disagree. First of all, at this time this movie was trying to come out, there was already a whole Nina Simone documentary on Netflix and a studio album featuring Nina Simone herself. So did Nina Simone's story deserve to be told further? Absolutely. However, there was not enough of a rush to necessitate miscasting. Secondly, Nina Simone's own family expressed their displeasure at Zoe Saldana being cast like immediately, like four years before the movie was released. So her and the producers had ample time to sit and think about why Nina's family would be this displeased about this casting. And in my opinion, I think that Miss Zoe saw an Oscar worthy role, the producers saw a cash cow and they just went along with it anyway, both to the displeasure of Nina Simone's family and at the risk of misrepresenting and devaluing the legacy of Nina Simone. And lastly, I'm sorry, this movie literally has a 2% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It was horribly received. The script was terrible. It tanked in the box office. So in my humble opinion, I'm pretty sure no movie at all would have been preferable to misrepresenting the struggle of the subject of the movie, erasing her identity as a dark skinned black woman, and at the end of the day, just still being a bad freaking movie. So just to wrap this up, I'm sure you're wondering like, all right, why are you bringing this up now? This whole fiasco was four years ago. Nina Simone's estate has already told Zoe Saldana to keep Nina's name out of her mouth for the rest of her life, which is absolutely insane. Zoe Saldana has already seen the error of her ways and apologized for her role in the movie. And everyone's just basically put this behind them. But the question remains, like in the face of all this criticism and backlash, why did the producers and Zoe Saldana herself like push through with this anyway? And I think the answer is the economics of Hollywood. Saldana is seen as bankable in a way that her darker skinned female colleagues are not. They chose Zoe Saldana because she would look better marketing the film, promoting it on mass, magazines, key king with Jimmy Fallon, etc. I was reading this article by Tanahisi Coates about this whole fiasco and he essentially pointed out something that really struck me. He said that a young Nina Simone would have had trouble being cast and seen as bankable for her own biopic. I'm planning on doing a more in-depth video on colorism in Hollywood so let me know if you're interested in that, if I should not do it, but I think that um, it's just so sad that so little has changed from Nina Simone's time and even in since 2016 when her biopic was released. Anyway, y'all, thanks so much for watching this far. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments because this was such a controversial case, so I'd love to hear what you guys think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you never want to miss an upload from me, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!